public address announcer, John Forsyth. At the tender age of 18, John Forsyth assumed his first professional job behind the public address microphone at Ebbets Field. It proved to be the turning point of his life. This was the first stepping stone for me, and a good one. It enabled me to build up a tremendous amount of poise, having to describe all those quite remarkable events that were taking place. Uh, and, um, and that gave me the kind of desire to see whether I could go on and, uh, and uh, be an actor. John went on to star in movies, plays, and TV. He was bachelor father in the 50s, the voice on Charlie's Angels in the 70s, and of course, Blake Carrington in Dynasty. But we took John back to his roots, to a place where apartments now tower over the landscape, but where once, dim bums were breaking hearts in Brooklyn. This is my first time back here, and I believe in about 40 some odd years, 45 years or so. This was the entrance, and an exciting place to be, too. Scalpers selling tickets to the big games, people all rushing to get in to watch batting practice, little kids chasing ball players for autographs. It was uh, very peaceful now and quiet, but I would tell you this place used to hum. Over there, they put up a school called the Jackie Robinson School, see, in his honor. And all through these stands, you know, they had the, the great Brooklyn band that the Hilda Chester and all used to lead with cowbells. And all during the game, they'd walk around and play. And it was exciting. A lot of colorful, weird characters used to be here. It was all part of the great phenomenon. This was home plate. Right about where that corner of the building is, and the stands went back out into right to the sidewalk. It's really hard to imagine. This was right field here, and uh, it wasn't the longest right field. I think it was only about 290 some odd feet. And regularly, Dolph Camilli and Dixie Walker and all the big sluggers would hit them over here. And as I said, they broke many a window here. And they would land on automobiles that came down Bedford Avenue here. Curiously enough, Babe Ruth never hit one over this wall because he never got a chance to bat. He was just a coach for the Dodgers in 1938. Well, this is a historic sight. This must be the cornerstone for this remarkable complex that was built here. But I'm afraid that I miss Ebbets Field. Next stop, the Brooklyn Historical Society, where vestiges of the long-lamented Dodgers stirred a few more memories in one who was there. As you can see, this is all the memorabilia that's here at the Brooklyn Historical Society in this wonderful, wonderful collection. Now, that's the mitt that Mickey Owen was using in the World Series against the Yankees when he dropped the third strike. And it was gloom time in Nevis Field. And Brooklyn never really recovered from that. Here, this was the banner day in the history of the borough of Brooklyn because it was 1955. I was in Paris making a movie. And when I heard I was playing a love scene with Olivia de Havilland in the picture, I remember I, when I heard that the Dodgers won the World Series, I dropped Olivia de Havilland, <laughs> stood up and cheered. A banner day. And here's maybe the saddest day that Brooklyn never had. Because we all equated Ebbets Field and the Dodgers with the things that were permanent and were beloved in the 
borough of Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Bridge, uh, landmarks in the city like the Empire State Building. Those things have, but it should never be torn away from this wonderful city. And there are many of us that still feel that it was a terrible crime to take the Dodgers away from Brooklyn and move them out to the Pacific Coast. The time, 1960. In a healthy United States, a pocket of gloom, disaster. The place is Brooklyn. The occasion, farewell to Ebbets Field. And for three quarters of a century, this field had been making statistics. Millions of statistics. Fun fact. Just as unalterable and just as true. The Dodgers had left Brooklyn forever. Life magazine said something that uh, may sum it all up. It said... In October 1941, as the World Series with the American League champion New York Yankees progressed, it became evident that loyalty to the Dodgers is perhaps the most powerful emotion man can experience. It's an emotion that blurs all political, racial, and geographical lines. And it's true. It was a great love affair that, and I'm sorry that it hadn't come to an end.